Good morning and welcome to Almost Big Bend National Park. That's right, we're here in Big Bend, Texas and we had all intentions to bring you guys inside the national park when we go filming. But unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to film inside the park and we'll explain that to you later. But here we are, we're on the outside of the park. This fence right here, this is the boundary for Big Bend National Park. So there you guys go. There it is, there's Big Bend National Park. And right over there is the entrance sign. Right here is not Big Bend. This is where we're allowed to film and we'll tell you why in a minute. Hey. What's that? So I know we're gonna explain the rules to them and why we're filming this way, but what do you think the rule is on you standing out there and me being inside the, the park? Are we able to film this? I'm pretty sure it said no filming in the park. I'm technically not inside right, the park. you're not in the park, but I am, so hi! So you're probably wondering why we can't take you guys inside and film while we're in Big Bend National Park. Well, it's a back and forth thing that's been happening. So a few years ago, well actually forever, there's been a rule that there's no commercial filming inside national parks unless you have a permit and go through a process. Well, YouTubers and social media people that was kind of a gray area. They were allowed to film because they weren't considered commercial because it's just one guy or two guys walking through the park with the camera. They weren't a big production, say like National Geographic or Discovery Channel, small crews. A while back, some big creators got taken to court and they were actually fined a lot of money and banned from filming in any national parks. They took that to court and the rule got overturned. So for the last two years or so, We've been able to film inside national parks with no problems. Guess what? They took that back to court and now specifically social media is considered commercial filming. Us small channels are considered the same as National Geographic or Discovery Channel. We have to follow the same processes, the same rules, and it's almost the same application fees and cost to film inside the park. That's why we can't take you guys inside the park. But we did a little research because there's so much misinformation out there on can you or can you not film in the park? Does YouTube creators have to fulfill the same requirements as the commercial creators? We actually reached out to the media director here in Big Bend National Park to get his answer. And he actually replied with us with an email and stated all the requirements and the process we have to go through to film inside the park. So when we say commercial use, YouTube and social media is considered commercial use is if you make money off of anything that you post. Well, since we are monetized, anything we put on our channel is considered commercial use now as far as the national park standards go. So we sent the email out and asked him, do we have to apply the same as the commercial filming? Because it is very vague on the website. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the email up on the screen that he sent back to us. And it's pretty straightforward. It says, if you are simply filming for your personal use and enjoyment, there is no problem. If you are producing something for social media, monetization, posting on YouTube, and generating revenue from it, you will need to obtain a commercial filming permit. To do so, you will need to complete the application form with the details included, when, where, etc., and submit an application fee of $150 to the address of Big Bend National Park. Once we receive that package, we'll begin drafting up a special use permit for filming that you can review. That's the email. It's pretty straightforward and it's not his job to enforce this. It's just his job to let us know what the rules are. And I'm perfectly fine with the email. The email actually gave me more information than anything I researched. We do in fact, because we make money on YouTube and social media, are required to follow the process for commercial filming. Now the National Park website, when you go to look it up on your own, is very vague. He actually sent us a link that basically spells it out for you. It's, it's cut and dry, there's no gray areas. So all commercial filming requires a permit, which means anything that generates revenue is considered commercial filming and you have to follow this process. Also, most still photography activities will require a permit if you're making money for them as well. Now it breaks it down, the difference between uh, commercial filming and still photography, but this is what applies to us. How to apply for a filming or photography permit. One, you have to allow for a minimum of 10 days to process any photography or filming permit applications. It's highly recommended that you contact the gentleman that we contacted prior to submitting the application to ensure that you know all the requirements and things that you need to do before submitting your application. You need to complete the application for special use, the form below. You need to attach a $150 application fee, check payable to the National Park Services. It's not refundable by the way, so if they deny you, that money does not guarantee you're gonna get the permit. You need to provide a certificate of general liability insurance issued by an insurance company operating in the United States. You need to provide a detailed production schedule and proposed location, so we need to know when we're filming, where we're filming, how long we're gonna film, and what we're filming about. And we also need to provide a detailed equipment list. So all the things that we have in our truck that we may use to film these videos needs to be listed and they need to approve it. 
And then we send the application to the Big Bend National Park. The request will be evaluated on the basis of the information in the application. Therefore, you are encouraged to test details to assist the park staff in evaluating the request, meaning you better put everything in there. More is better than none because they may deny it because you didn't provide enough information. And it says your application will be carefully reviewed by the park management and if approved, a permit with a specific conditions will be issued for signature. Location fees may apply depending upon the size and length of, of the project. Well, let's go check out the fees. On top of the application process and the feed for applying for the application, commercial filming, one to two people with a tripod only and a camera, zero dollars a day. We have me, Alicia, and three kids. That is gonna be $150 more a day because there's five of us in the videos. If they deem that we need a chaperone for our filming, they will assign us a park ranger who will spend time with us at $50 an hour. If we wanted to interview the park rangers as part of our project, they also charge $50 an hour for that. So now, not only are we spending $150 to just get the approval process started, once we're approved, there's most likely gonna be additional fees based on the size of our party and the content, whether or not they think we need a chaperone, and whether or not we talk to our ranger on camera. That is the cut and dry version of what it's like to go through the process. So here's my problem with the application process. You have to mail them the application as in snail mail. So that gets a little difficult because we all know we never know how long that's gonna take to reach them. Never know if it's gonna get opened once it gets on that person's desk. And then do they snail mail you back to let you know you're approved or do they email you or call you? I don't really know how that process works. So I think if they want to go this route, they should at least give you an email or something that you can submit your application online and then maybe mail your payment in or wire your payment in, whatever. But to me, snail mail is not the way to go. It gets better. It doesn't go actually to the national park, like to an address, it goes to a PO box. So who knows how often that gets checked. So another problem with this process is we've done some research and there's been several YouTube creators They've done it the right way. They went ahead and got the application done. They got the permit. And when they got approved, they got given a map of where they were allowed to film. And over 90% of the park was not available to film in, meaning they could only film where their vehicle could go. So scenic overlooks, while driving, parking lots. They could not walk in the trails or out in the wilderness areas and make these videos. So they went through all the effort and they weren't even allowed to film the things they really wanted to film. So that's another thing. You may not even get approved to film what you were planning on filming because that part of the park is not available for commercial filming. So here's another problem I have with the whole application is you have to give them an itinerary. Like where do you wanna be in the park? What time? How long will you be there? What part of the park are you gonna be utilizing while you're filming? And while that may work for like a National Geographic or Discovery Channel, because maybe they wanna film by a certain river or you know, film a certain animal at a certain location, that doesn't really work for us, especially with kids. We don't know the itinerary minute to minute because things quickly change with kids so sometimes we might think we're going to get out of the house by 10 a.m and it might be 12 p.m social media influencers are very fluid we just kind of go with the flow we turn our camera on and whatever happens happens so having to provide that itinerary and then maybe it not even getting approved is a problem in the past is we did try and plan our days so we knew we were going to say let's let's say Yellowstone National Park. We knew we wanted to see Buffalo. We wanted to see this, this highlight of the trip. But then we quickly realized that once you're in the park, different things happen. You know, you might be drawn to a different area or a different location and that's okay. You want to be fluid and you want to be able to go with the flow. So now we just turn on the camera and we film when we feel it's appropriate. So we don't always know where we're going. Yes, the Buffalo meet may be at point A, but we may go to point C first because that's the way the day has worked out. Another thing that's a problem with the application process is that each park has its own process. So if we were to go through the process here at Big Ben and got approved, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the same process for other national parks. So say we went to Carlsbad Caverns next week or any of the parks in Utah, it's a different process for each park and with different requirements and application fees. So it's not even centralized over the whole national park system. It's basically whatever the park deems is acceptable for their national park. They need to come up with a standardized system if they're gonna go this route. And they honestly need to make it to where we can apply for it right here when we come into the visitor center. If we could show up and say, we'd like to film today, here's all of our stuff, walk out the building, 
that would make this a lot easier because then we could be a little bit more spontaneous but still show up and be approved to film while in the park. When we come to these parks, it's not once you get in the park, everything is free. So we have the cost of diesel, things at the visitor center, junior ranger programs, the time it takes to actually do the filming, it, um, it requires a little bit of extra money because you have extra diesel and things like that. When we do film, we hope that we can recover some of that cost back. Um, on the back end, you know, when YouTube pays us. With these extra costs that are being added on to us for these application fees and the daily filming fees, it's just not feasible for a channel of our size to recoup those costs. What she means is, is we are a very small channel and we hope to at least sort of try to break even on what it costs to do the adventure. We don't break even on the national park videos. Most of the time we lose money to make the video. Now, we're gonna lose money plus the additional fees in order to film the video. So for us, even if we went through the process, we are likely not going to film these videos because we're not a big enough channel to be able to recover the cost to make the video. And this whole process is pretty sad because when we're in Utah, in order to make the most use of our time, we actually went to three national parks in one day and we filmed it all. But now we wouldn't be able to do that because we'd have to go through three separate application processes and give three separate itineraries, which there is no way we would have made that work because we rolled with the punches on that one and it totally went out of order compared to what we thought we were gonna do when we left the house that day. Because we met people on the way and they said, hey, instead of doing this, you should go do that. Or this is really awesome. Or you should definitely go do that, but don't worry about that. So that's how come it's almost impossible for us to film based on these requirements because we don't really have a plan. It's just spur of the moment. Here's our little rant. We're both gonna rant, me and Alicia, because we have two different opposing views on why we think this system is being put in place. Mine is I think it's a money grab. I think the national park system wants to get their cut of the fee of people making money off the national parks. We wouldn't know about half of these parks that exist today without YouTube. And they sure didn't mind when all these YouTubers were filming all these beautiful parks and driving all these visitors to enter the parks. The national park system didn't mind they were getting all the extra entry fees, all the extra visitor center spending, all the America the Beautiful passes being purchased. They didn't care about any of the extra restaurant spending or even the local economy gains because of all the visitors that are now coming to these national parks that the masses really didn't know about until YouTube started putting them in our face. We didn't know that half the parks we've been to existed until YouTube told us about them. The national park system didn't seem to mind all this until they realized how much some of the YouTubers that brought these videos to us were making. So we feel that it's the national park system's way of pay to play. They want a cut of the money because you're making money and that's just how they're gonna operate. There's so many creators out there, big and small, but we're all treated exactly the same. So we are considered the same size as National Geographic according to their application rules and processes and fees. Now, if they come with a small party, they technically could film for cheaper than we could film. If they come with the big party, they will incur a few more costs, but the process is overall the exact same no matter how big or how small you are. So this is where Kevin and I kind of differ. He thinks it's about money, which it probably is. I mean, it's the government. But I also think that it's about slowing down the number of visitors that come into the park. I think that with so much social media and YouTube influence, the parks are just being overrun by visitors. And I think that they don't have enough park rangers. I think they don't have enough parking. They don't have enough resources. And the park are just overall getting really crowded which is why some of the bigger most popular national parks are going to a reservation system so you can't even like be in the area and just drop in because you came on business or whatever and you want to come spend a day in the park anymore you've got to have a reservation to be able to get into that park because everything is so crowded now I also think that the reason that they're only letting most people film from overlooks and um, you know the roads and things like like that versus on the trails is because people aren't respecting the trails so because there are more visitors and there's more foot traffic we've seen it on a lot of the trails we've been on so the trail may have started this big but because of the traffic it's now grown this big because the grass and everything is getting walked on so I think they're trying to conserve their resource and help restore it but they're just doing it in the wrong way 
in my opinion. So let us know, what do you think? Do you think it's a money grab or do you think it's about them slowing down the traffic into the park? Unfortunately, we're not gonna take you guys inside Big Bend National Park today because of the stuff we just told you. But that doesn't mean we're not gonna still do it. Our entire time of traveling, we've based our travels around the national park system. So they're usually the big ticket item we wanna see everywhere we go. And we're gonna continue to do so because we feel it's important to expose our children to all the beautiful things America has to offer. We're still gonna buy the America the Beautiful Pass, we're still gonna spend money in the visitor centers, we're still gonna do the junior ranger programs, we're still gonna spend money inside the park and join the park, we just can't bring you guys along because we can't justify the extra expense. Hopefully, this gets handled in court and we can go back to showing you guys these beautiful places in the future. We're gonna go inside Big Bend National Park today and we wish we could take you along with us, but unfortunately, due to the new rules, we cannot. So this is what a video is gonna look like today. Oh man, guys, I wish you could see this. We're at the window view in the Chizos Basin Mountains. Man, it's amazing. I wish you could see it. Go Google it. It's awesome. Oh my goodness. So we are at Santa Elena Canyon. I wish we could show you guys. On one side, we've got Texas, and then we have the Rio Grande River. On the other side, there is Mexico. This is like the most popular spot. You've got to go check it out. I really wish I could show you this part. We decided to take a scenic drive down Old Ore Road. The park ranger said our dually was good to go. We should not have brought this dually here. I really wish I could show you how bad my dually looks right now. If you come, do not bring a dually down this road. It shouldn't be here. We have to figure out how to get out of here. Amazing drive. Hey. What? Do you think there's going to be a new rule that there's no audio recording either in the national parks? I mean, we are technically recording, but it's just audio. They said no commercial filming. <laughs> they didn't say anything about commercial audio -ing. So I know we've seen the Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive before, but it's still the second time around seeing it. This is hard to believe that we have all of this in Texas. It reminds me so much of Utah, of Arizona, Canyon Lands. Like it, there's so much different scenery. You've got to go check it out wish we could share it with you. What an awesome day here in Big Bend National Park. I'm sorry that we couldn't show you everything, but hopefully you heard it and you can go Google it and see it for yourself. Let's take one last look at this place. This, this right here is the most beautiful thing in Texas, I think. If you've never been to Big Bend, you need to come down here and check it out. Now we hope today's video explained to you why we can't take you along inside the park and show you what we see, but hopefully that changes in the future. We can bring you along again. Hope you enjoyed it. We love you and we'll see you in the next one. I promise the next one will actually show you the things we're looking at. See ya.